Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here tonight, amen. House of God, amen. Thanking God for the opportunity to, to stand one more time. Amen, this side of eternity. Amen, to worship and to praise Him for all that He's done, all that He's going to do, and all that He's continuing to do in my life, and in the life of the church, and the people of God, amen. Tonight I felt His presence when I walked in the place today, amen, tonight, and man, it's just such a, even when I was up here doing announcements, it was just like easy, you know what I'm saying? It's just easy. Amen, that's the Spirit of God, and where the Spirit of God is, there's liberty, Amen. Ain't nothing too hard with God, amen. It's easy, you know. I don't, I don't consider myself maybe one of the best, uh, most well-spoken people. I don't uh, use a lot of big words, don't know a lot of big words. But, uh, uh, you know, just tonight it was just a feeling of just freedom, amen, in the house of God. And I thank God tonight for freedom in my life and what God is, uh, and how God has freed me from uh, things in my life and continuing to free me from things in my life and it's an everyday process have I arrived absolutely not if I get to the place to where I think that I've arrived that's a place where me and God are going to conflict one with another amen because God he said that he would accomplish that work in which he started in my life and uh, to completion and I thank God tonight that it's always a process it seems like they never get finished working on the highway well that's the way my life is amen it, it feels like you know God there's always something more that we can do there's always uh, construction going on in my life and I thank God for that tonight that don't cost you anything I just free a charge amen God just speaking uh, tonight to his people and that he loves us and that he cares for us and uh, tonight if you would let's go to the Lord and prayer Heavenly Father I want to thank you God For this day, God, this time, uh, Father, that you give us to come and be in the house tonight, God, we praise and worship you, God, for all things. God, this Wednesday night, God, this midweek service, God, we pray, Father, that you come down. And God, in this place, we know that you're here and right now, God, that you're in this place, God, we feel your your presence, God, the Spirit of God, amen, flowing in this place tonight, God, we ask, Father, that you anoint, God, the ears to hear, uh, God, what thus saith the, the, the Lord tonight, God, and what you have to say to him, God, and Lord, I pray, God, you anoint me tonight, God, hide me behind the cross, God, let these words come forth as you would uh, give me utterance tonight, Lord, and we give you the praise and the glory for all things. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. I began to think about, uh, uh, Marcus texted me uh, Monday night, and he, or Monday morning, evening, middle of the day, sometime, he said, oh yeah, you're preaching Wednesday. So uh, I've been kind of just meditating on what God was speaking to me about, and uh, I'd seen a uh, mentioned something Sunday about seeing that finish line and thought God was going to uh, go on and, and uh, expound on some things about uh, making it all the way to the finish and talking about King Agrippa. But as I began to read and I began to study, God began to reveal uh, something else to me. And he says, just tell my church, he said, to stay with the ship. Amen. He says tonight to the church, he says, to stay with the ship. If I had a title bill, you call me sometimes and this is what he would have me to say tonight is stay with the ship, amen. No matter what's going on in your life, to cling hold to the word of God, amen. Uh, cling hold to the prayer life that you have and stay with the ship. Don't jump, don't, don't bail out and we're gonna make it alive, amen. I promise you tonight, if you'll stay with the ship, we'll make it, amen. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> it seems like every time I turn the news on every time I see something on social media every time I, I see this or I see that it's always bad it's always bad you see uh, you know just all these things are going on around us and it's like God how much longer amen will you tarry amen how much longer will you wait amen and he's the mercy of the Lord is just extended 
amen, to the world right now. Just That's all it's lacking is just the mercy of the Lord is extended right now in this time that we live. And, and it's just the mercy of God waiting for that last one that he knows he's going to call and he's going to come. And uh, he's gonna, then he's going to come and get us, amen. But here I'm going to read you some scripture out of the uh, 27th chapter of the book of Acts, amen. And we're going to talk about Paul and the shipwreck, amen, tonight. And uh, something that God used then uh, here in this word to encourage me in verse 20, in chapter 27 and verse 27 is where I'll start tonight, amen. And he says, but when the 14th night was come, seven and seven, number of perfection, amen, seven uh, squared, amen. <laughs> That's God, amen, seven, the number of perfection. The 14th night was come and uh, all, as we were driven up and down, in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Amen. We're drawing near to a country. Amen. Every day we get closer and closer. He didn't come get us today. Amen. But he might come get us tomorrow. If he don't come get us tomorrow, he might come get us Friday. If he don't come get us Friday, amen, he might come get us Saturday. Amen. He, he don't come Saturday. He might come Sunday. Uh, but we're drawing near, amen, at midnight, amen, midnight. We're drawing near to a country, a new country, a different place, amen, a safety zone, amen, for the children and people of God, amen. He says that he, but when the 14th night was come, as they were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found in 25, in 20 fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms. They were getting closer. Amen and closer. I want you to know tonight, church, we're getting closer. Amen and closer home. Amen. We're getting closer and closer to that place that God has prepared for us. Amen. And that he told us in his word. He said, I go uh, to prepare a place that where I am, uh, there you may be also tonight. Amen. We're getting closer and closer and closer. And 29 says then, Fearing at least we should have fallen upon rocks. Don't get nervous. It might get a little rocky. Don't get nervous. It might get a little rocky. He says they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for day. They became afraid in this hour. It's no time uh, to become afraid. Amen. It may get a little rocky. Amen, but just cast your anchor out and wait upon the Lord. Amen, cast your anchor out. Amen, anchor into the storm. Amen, tonight cast your anchor out and just begin to wait upon God. He said that he is the light. Amen, he is the day. Amen, he will expose the darkness. Don't panic and abandon ship. He said, hold fast to the horns of the altar in your life. Amen, hold fast to the horns of the altar in your life. Don't panic. You see, so many people, I, I went through an instance about uh, four years ago that um, I really didn't know what to do. I was in a job and they came to us in February and they said, hey, you know what, as of such and such date, you'll no longer have a job. And I thought, whew, man, what am I going to do? About four days later, I was late for work. It was on a Friday morning. And my wife comes in and says, I just took a pregnancy test and I'm pregnant. So I've lost, I'm going to lose my job this certain amount of time. It began to get rocky in my life. But I, little did I know what God had in store for my life because I try to sometimes, I catch myself trying to take claim of something that I've done, but it ain't nothing that I've done, but it's what God has done in my life. Amen. And I just began to be patient. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I, all I know is I'm going to put my trust in you and you lead me in the right direction. And we had to cut a deal and say, you know what, we're not going to, we won't take any interviews or anything like that in order to get our severance package. You couldn't take interviews. You couldn't do anything until the day that they walked in and told you that they didn't need you anymore in order to get that severance package. Man, I seen guys start bailing. I mean, I seen guys going taking. I mean, I had a nineteen dollar an hour job. Those ain't everywhere. I knew what it took for me to survive at nineteen dollars an hour, and sixteen dollars an hour wasn't going to cut it. Ten dollars an hour wasn't going to cut it. I said, God, I need you to to take control of this situation because I don't have any idea. 
And all these guys, my friends, guys I'd known for nine years bailing, going to different jobs, $10 an hour, $12 an hour, just because they were afraid that they couldn't set it and wait it out until that day. And I just kept riding. I just kept trusting God. I just kept trusting God. I threw my anchor out, Lester, and began to pray for daytime. It was tough. Was it tough? Absolutely, it was tough. All, all my buddies text me on the phone from their new jobs. Hey, man, this is a great place to work. You need to do, 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 do all this noise coming, all this, all this, all this, all this, all this. Little did I know what God had in store for my life. I'm going to tell you that I never missed a meal. <laughs> I never was broke. I never didn't have... I sold a vehicle. I bought two vehicles in that time when I didn't have a job. Hey, Amen. <laughs> That's God. I had more in the refrigerator to eat, amen, when I didn't have a job, amen, than I did when I did have a job. I had, I had more. I took the entire summer off. I didn't even work. I took the entire summer off. I took two months before I ever started even really hard looking for a job because I'm like, God, I'm just waiting on you. I was making sure, though, I was, I was keeping up. I wasn't just sitting there not doing anything. I was, I was being prepared. I was checking places. I was looking. I was saying, God, now I need your direction. This job here, what about this one? And he kept saying, no, not that one. I kept listening. I didn't bail. I didn't jump ship. It's the same way in our life right now. Amen. We're so close uh, to the prize. Amen. We're so close to the finish line. Uh, don't jump ship now, amen. I know it looks rough. The waters look turbulent. Everything going on around us, but just stay with the ship is what he would have the church to do tonight. Stay with the ship. Amen. Trust God. Lean on him. Not on your own understanding. I didn't have a clue when I went through that in my life. I didn't have any idea what God was going to do and how God was going to bless me. I didn't have any idea uh, what God was going to... I mean, man, it's just been phenomenal. I, I don't even... That was that was supposed to be the worst time or one of the worst things in my life. But I look back and it was probably one of the greatest times in my life. One of the biggest blessings of my life. God said He'll take evil and He'll turn it for good. Amen. He said that. And the bad things, He said He'll turn it, amen, for good in your life. What the, what the devil would mean for, for evil... God, He'll turn it for good. And I look back on that, and man, I got to spend two months with the wife and, and, and the kids, and we fished all the time. I went to the creek and the mountains every, every other day. I, you know, I, I had a good time, you know, and, and I just trusted God. I knew He had something coming. Trust God. We know there's something coming, Bill. Stay with the ship. Amen. Don't bail. Throw your anchor out and pray for day. Amen. Throw your anchor out in that dark place in your life and, and pray for daytime. Just grab, grab a hold of God. Amen. And don't let Him go. And as the shipmen were about to... I'm sorry, let me back up. The very least we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, we had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Unless you stay in the ship, Lester, unless you stay in the ship, Bill, unless, Gary, unless we stay in the ship, Harold, Ivy, Jewel, all of you, unless we stay in the ship, we won't be saved. There's no safety in the world. There's no safety in things. There's no safety in our stuff. There's only safety in the ark. There's only safety in the ship. There's only safety in the cross. In the blood of Jesus. There's only safety there for our lives. He said, except these abide in the ship, cannot be saved. He wants you to abide in Him tonight. Amen. That that was what I kind of felt when we were singing tonight. That's that's kind of what I was kind of just laying in the lap of the Lord tonight. Amen. Just kind of abiding with Him. Just kind of hanging out. Amen. It was kind of like we were just we just come to hang out with God tonight, just to abide with Him and just just stay with Him. But God, I'm gonna tell you, there's some terrible things going on out in the world. I mean, I I mean, you see, you know, you know what? I, I, you know, just I'm not going to go into detail, but man, it's just 
some of the things that I've seen over the past, past few days, few weeks, have just been horrifying to my spirit. I'm like, I read a headline and I'm like, why do people even concern? Why, why would somebody even dig into that? It's so evil, so demonic, so, so you know, terrible of a thing. That, but that just lets you know that the world that we, you know. That